Welcome to the 2022 Ontario Business Achievement Awards. everyone and welcome to the 2022 Ontario Business Achievement Awards brought to you by our generous partners at Canadian National Railway. This is an extra special year because we're celebrating the 40th anniversary of the OBAAs and we're delighted to partner again with TLN to ensure that this celebration of the best of the best gets to the widest possible audience. We're going to kick off this uh, series with the CEO of the Year Award, starting with a bang. But before that, I wanna talk about a couple of things. Number one, as the indispensable partner of business, the Ontario Chamber of Commerce is in constant conversation with leaders across the economy. Coming out of COVID, it's clearer than ever that the single best way for Ontario to compete and win in the global economy is to ensure that we build an economy where we're leveraging and including the talents of every single member of our society. That means the inclusive economy, and that's this year's theme of the OBAAs. So, CEO of the Year Award, made possible by our incredible episode partner, Layuna, the Laborers International Union of North America. And now, with no further ado, the winner of the 2022 Ontario Business Achievement Award CEO of the Year Award, none other than Tabitha Bull, the CEO of the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business and national champion on building the inclusive economy and a tremendous leader. I had the chance to sit down with Tabitha recently. Take a listen. Such a great pleasure to be here with you, Tabitha. Just before we get uh, on with uh, how just awesome you are, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the CCAB, the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business. Our organization is a national not-for-profit membership association. We're almost at our 40th year, so in 2024 we'll be celebrating our 40th anniversary. Uh, we have Indigenous and non-Indigenous members um, approaching 1,800 at the moment, actually, which has been some significant growth over the last two years. And our mandate is really to grow the Indigenous economy, so supporting Indigenous entrepreneurs through networking and celebration of achievements, through programming, and more recently, you know, of course, over the last two years, a lot of advocacy work to ensure that businesses could sustain through the pandemic. And now as we grow out of the pandemic, how do we ensure that we can rebuild those Indigenous businesses and ensure that they're able to have the supports that they need? And then we do a lot of work with uh, non-Indigenous businesses on supporting them in working with Indigenous community, Indigenous business through mentorship and procurement and really building those bridges. That's really what we're, what we're here to do. How would your team talk about your leadership style? I am very heartfelt, like really wanting to ensure that the team is okay and that they feel supported. On a business side, I'm an engineer, so I, I'm a lot of very like process and strategy, but always thinking about what's the big picture. Like, where are we going? You talk about giving others flexibility, but I just look at the list of things that <laughs> uh, you've been participating and helping to lead, uh, and it's daunting. Um, you know, from, from the UN to a TV show to running the business. Um, to sitting on the board of the Ontario Chamber of Commerce. And, uh, and you do all of it with such incredible uh, professionalism. As you look back at the last 12 months uh, or even 24 months, what is it that you're most proud of? I'm really proud how this organization has grown through a very difficult time. We've almost doubled our membership. Our team is almost at 50 staff now, and we've been able to, and we were just under 30 at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and the team has really grown, taken on new challenges and 
new opportunities. Personally, I'm really proud that I've been able to keep that leadership and be that leader that the team feels supported and we've been able to grow. From a you know, business perspective, I'm really proud of our advocacy work. At the beginning of COVID, um, you know, definitely wasn't what I expected was going to be my first 90 days or first year as CEO. And a number of the programs that came out didn't work for Indigenous businesses or they weren't eligible to apply. And we worked really hard at advocating for businesses at all levels of government to ensure that the programs were changed, that businesses could be able to apply. And some of those were really significant. The wage subsidy is an example. We had a number of businesses who, who weren't eligible for that and we had to really push for it. And we got those achievements. So as you know, the uh, overarching theme for this year's Ontario Business Achievement Awards is the inclusive economy and the work that you and the team have done coming out of uh, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to work on a national Indigenous uh, economic strategy. Got to be proud of that. And tell us a little bit about um, some of the key principles and uh, key action items. Under the leadership of Dawn Madabi Leach, she pulled together a number of national Indigenous economic organizations to start to really look at how do we move forward on rebuilding the Indigenous economy. And when we look back, um, Indigenous people were excluded from the economy purposely through the Indian Act. So we need to find ways that we can rebuild that generational wealth that was lost and begin to move back to a prosperous community and prosperous communities across the country. Uh, so the strategy we worked over throughout COVID on Zoom meetings every other week on really developing where do we see the key pillars and pathways that are needed. So those are land, people, infrastructure, and finance. And then within those we started working like, where, what's the vision? Where do we really want to be if this strategy is fully implemented? And then there's 107 calls to economic prosperity that anyone could take up and, and find an action that they could do. And some of those are about building indigenous institutions uh, that are indigenous led around trade, for example. Others are about uh, procurement. So ensuring that corporations have measures to procure from indigenous business. And then there's others around institutions. So how, you know, as the fastest growing um, population in the country, how are we ensuring that the right uh, opportunities are there for a youth to be able to take part in post-secondary education? How do we ensure that they have the skills that they need? And how are we closing those gaps? The Canadian government appointed you to the uh, Indo-Pacific strategy development team. And you brought a, a very interesting perspective on um, agencies and, and setting up uh, trade agreements with Indigenous populations throughout that region. Tell us a little bit about that. I hold that with a lot of responsibility. I think there's a lot of rooms that I have been invited to in the last two years that Indigenous women probably have never been invited to. When we look at Indo-Pacific countries, you know, almost all of them have Indigenous populations as well. When we look at the poverty level of Indigenous people in those countries, it's not unlike in Canada. There's a significant gap there. But we have so much to learn from Indigenous people within all of those countries, particularly when we look at when it comes to climate change and how can we really look at traditional knowledge that these people have in their own country around climate change, around agriculture and aquaculture. I think there's so much that we can learn from one another. And part of that, too, is Indigenous to Indigenous trade. Um, that, that trade should be on its own. We see already Indigenous businesses in New Zealand working with Indigenous businesses in Canada and finding ways to be part of each other's supply chain. What's the vision for the CCAB uh, under your leadership for uh, this next period? I really want to see us continue to grow the procurement space. I'd love to see us be able to have uh, continue to build on our procurement marketplace. We currently have close to a thousand businesses, Indigenous businesses in the marketplace, but you know, there's close to 60,000 businesses in Canada. So we have a ways to go to ensure that we're promoting and supporting business that way. On a national scale as well, um, and we're moving in this direction, but um, while our head office is in Toronto, we now have uh, team members in Calgary and Edmonton and Newfoundland, and I want to ensure that we're continuing to grow our team across the country. So, so we have people that businesses can meet with directly across the country as well. There is a real opportunity in trade, as we talked about earlier, and there isn't really an Indigenous trade association in the country. You know, businesses are interested in trade, interested in where we're going and exporting. Uh, so 
I think there's a gap there that we need to fill and I am looking at that as well from a strategy perspective where can we fill that gap is that our role so as businesses watching this who want to diversify their supply chain and get into the procurement market where do they go uh, to find out more about uh, the market you've created through the CCAB? Yeah, so they can you know, go directly to our website. There's lots of information there on the procurement marketplace. Um, it's, uh, it's a platform where uh, we have a number of certified Indigenous businesses there. And then as a procurement champion or someone who's made a commitment to purchase, um, you have access to that marketplace to go in search based on exactly what you're looking for in the region for the business, but also to connect directly. And this is something that, you know, it's not just about the marketplace, it's really about that commitment. So uh, anyone who is committed to procurement becomes a procurement champion in the tool, also has to identify someone who's going to be that point of contact for Indigenous business. You made the comment earlier um, that the Indigenous community in Canada communities uh, are actually the fastest growing and really the only growing aside from immigration community uh, in Canada. How significant and important is that to the future of the country? If we're thinking about not just the employment, the, the indigenous population and the youth that's growing, how, you know, the opportunity for them to be employees across the country, but also the buying power of indigenous people. As indigenous population grows, their ability to, to buy from any business also grows. And they, as I think a lot of youth right now are really looking at where they invest their money, where they purchase from, you know, people are looking at, is this company sustainable? Is there zero waste in this product? Uh, do they have a social impact? And I, I particularly when we, when we look at indigenous youth that are coming up and, and so immersed in their culture and thinking about seven generations ahead and seven grandfather teachings, uh, Corporate Canada needs to ensure that they're seen as a responsible organization that does good work with Indigenous people and supports Indigenous people. So, so it's incredibly significant that they are the youngest growing population. So combining heart-led with an engineering process background, talk to me a little bit about what concrete changes that's made to your leadership style? Every pie is the same size. So if you look at a hierarchical org chart, it's very easy to see, oh, this person has 10 direct reports and I only have two direct reports. It show, it, visually, it just feels very different. Um, so every pie is the same size for each department. And also it's all connected. You can't take out one section of the pie and the org chart work. Where a hierarchical org chart, you can take off one pillar and nobody would know the difference. But if we don't have everyone connected in each of those pies together, we're not going to work as an organization. Um, the other thing that just visually uh, makes a difference is it's all on the same page. It feels good to talk about it. It feels good to really represent that that's how our organization works. We're really moving away from this hierarchy of a CEO at the top and everybody moving down from there. And we're more working in a circle towards the same mission and vision. And that circle is so evocative of uh, philosophy within uh, Indigenous yeah. culture. And it's, it's really about, you know, us being connected and, and supporting one another. And two, when you look at it, you can see that, you know, we're all connected in a circle. And even though there's still that, like, levels of, you know, as we go out from the circle, but it really means that we all have to work together towards the same thing and, and be connected. No better illustration of the inclusive economy. So thank you for sharing <laughs> that you. with us. Well, your career is exemplary as an engineer, as a leader, as a contributor to so many organizations across this country is a wonderful show of respect uh, for that tradition and for your elders. And it's been such an honor uh, for me to talk to you today. Thank you so much, Rocco. It's a real honor. She is a purpose-driven and values-based leader and influencer. You're proud of your heritage. You're a wonderful role model for all of our people. And I've no doubt that your team is very inspired by your activities every day.
She's an absolutely amazing leader. What she has demonstrated in leading the CCAB through the time of COVID has been nothing short of outstanding. She's a great colleague. She's smart, she's collegial, she's always constructive in any intervention that she makes. And she's somebody who's just a pleasure to be around. You know, she represents her community well, and she's a great person to have as a colleague. Her continued drive to see Indigenous businesses succeed. I am so grateful for that. Thank you, Tabitha. One was her advocacy for Indigenous business in Canada during the COVID-19 pandemic. It was absolutely critical in our representation and her ability to support her team and people generally during stressful times. She just shows up so authentically and I believe this is an accomplishment she does always. The movement that's happened within Indigenous procurement. As an Indigenous business owner myself, I can't believe the opportunities that are coming our way and from our company growing from three people to 15, I attribute that to a lot of the work that you've done in the procurement area and getting Indigenous businesses on the map. Thank you for that. Hi, I'm Greg Rickford, Ontario's Minister of Northern Development and Minister of Indigenous Affairs. I'm pleased to join you for the Ontario Business Achievement Awards in celebration of your success as business leaders and innovators. I extend my sincere congratulations to all award recipients, especially to the Ontario Chamber of Commerce's CEO of the year, my friend, Tabitha Bull. A great leader, Tabitha, under your leadership, the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Businesses has supported lasting economic prosperity and relationships among Indigenous communities. Your commitment to strengthening Indigenous economic development and drive to remove systematic barriers has created long-term success for Indigenous businesses, communities, and organizations alike. It is without a doubt that your efforts contribute to building a more inclusive, stronger, and prosperous Ontario. Congratulations, Tabitha. Well done. Hi, I'm Pam DeMoff, the Member of Parliament for Oakville North Burlington, and I'm thrilled to be congratulating Tabitha Bull as CEO of the year. Tabitha has just been a tremendous partner to work with. When I was first appointed as Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Indigenous Services, my son Fraser actually said, Mom, you have to meet with Tabitha Bull. And that was the very first meeting that I had. I've had the pleasure of working with Tabitha to ensure that more Indigenous businesses are benefiting from procurement from the federal government. She also was a leader during the pandemic to make sure that Indigenous businesses could benefit from programs that the federal government brought forward. At first they didn't, and it was because of Tabitha's leadership that they, we were able to modify programs that would benefit Indigenous businesses. So Tabitha, congratulations. I can't think of anyone more deserving. Fraser and I just say all the best. Hello, bonjour. Mark Miller here, Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations, bringing greetings from the Government of Canada. I'm joining you virtually from the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Initiative people. Today, it's my pleasure to congratulate Tabitha Bull, President and CEO of the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business, as the recipient of this year's CEO of the Year Award. Tabitha is truly a leader and trailblazer in the world of Indigenous business. Under her leadership, the CCAB recently became one of the five Indigenous organizations involved in the National Indigenous Economic Strategy, an Indigenous-led and driven strategy that guides reconciliation and collaboration in rebuilding Indigenous economies. She's also been a strong supporter of Indigenous business throughout the pandemic, regularly offering her expertise as a member of the Canadian government's COVID-19 Supply Council. On top of this, Tabitha is an active board member of Wigwam and Housing Incorporated Young People's Theatre in Toronto, and the Canadian Advisory Group to the United Nations that promotes women's economic empowerment. As a strong initiative woman with so many diverse interests and achievements, it's really an honour to be part of today's ceremonies in presenting her this award. Tabitha's work will continue to advance progress for Canada and Indigenous peoples. And please join me in congratulating and celebrating Tabitha's incredible accomplishments and wishing her continued success moving forward. Miigwech, Dynamic Marcy. Thank you. Merci. Let's take another moment to thank our incredibly generous partners, our series partner, CN, without whom this is not possible, and this episode's partner, Leuna, the Laborers International Union of North America.
Tabitha's inclusive nature and passion for supporting Indigenous businesses inspires us all to go that extra mile. There is no one more deserving of receiving the CEO of the Year Award. From all of us at CCAB, we would like to say, Congratulations. Congratulations, Tabitha, for being recognized as CEO of the Year by the Ontario Chamber of Commerce. For all who, like me, who have had the opportunity to work with and witness your leadership, there will be resounding agreement that this award is truly fitting. It is a personal honour and a professional privilege as co-chair of the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business and on behalf of the board and also the team to speak to and honour your tremendous impact and influence as a leader. Tanse Tabitha Nduthim, congratulations. You deserve this and every accolade and every good thing that comes your way. You lead with such humility and such grace and you lift individuals up, you lift communities up, you lift our people broadly up and you've certainly lifted me. And I just want you to know how proud I am to know you, to call you a friend and to know that you lead with such authentic love and compassion for your team and for our communities. Congratulations, Tabitha. I could not think of a more deserving CEO. I look up to you, I admire you, I aspire to be like you, and I cannot wait to see what you're up to next. Hi, Tabitha. Congratulations from uh, myself, our team at SIPS, and on behalf of the Canadian Council of Aboriginal Business, uh, your accolades are well deserved. It has been an amazing year. We are overly impressed with everything that you do. Congratulations, well deserved, and I am proud to be your colleague and friend. Congratulations, Tabitha, on being named CEO of the year at this year's Ontario Business Achievement Awards. Your tireless work on behalf of Indigenous and non-Indigenous businesses alike is nothing short of inspiring. And I can't think of anyone more deserving of this award. Your leadership of the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business has been pivotal to strengthening the Indigenous economy and creating a more inclusive Canadian market. Well, first, I need to congratulate Tabitha on being selected by the Ontario Chamber of Commerce as their CEO of the year. I can't imagine anyone more fitting to receive this award and this acknowledgement. Tabitha has done an absolutely outstanding job. What she has done has been above and beyond anyone's expectations and is absolutely outstanding. Sego, greetings to everybody. I'm so pleased to be part of this celebration. Congratulations, Tabitha. What an amazing leader and visionary you are. And it is so wonderful to see you recognized in this way. Hi everyone, on behalf of all of us here at Hydro One, I want to congratulate Tabitha Bull on her outstanding achievements. Her impact this year has been monumental and we look forward to continuing to work with her. Congratulations, Tabitha. Well, after that inspiring interview, it is time to hand over the hardware for this year's Ontario Business Achievement Award, CEO of the Year Award. I can't think of a better person to do that than former OBAA Lifetime Achievement Award winner and a national leader in diversity and building the inclusive economy, the VP International for LIUNA, the Laborers International Union of North America, none other than Joseph Mancinelli. Over to you, Joseph. The Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business has seen some tremendous growth through the past few years. This doesn't happen by chance or by coincidence. It happens because of very strong leadership. That leadership is being celebrated this year by the Ontario Chamber of Commerce in its Business Excellence Awards. And I am so proud 
to present this year's award as CEO of the Year to Tabitha. Tabitha, congratulations to you. Team Miigwech, thank you so much for this incredible honor. Joseph, to you and the team at Layuna, thank you so much for sponsoring this award. Rocco, to OCC, and all of the team members at OCC, thank you for making this award possible. To my team at CCAB and our board of directors, thank you so much for believing in me and for continuing to work so hard for our mandate. To my family at home for supporting me over the last two and a half years. To all of our members for continuing to support this organization. And a shout out, of course, to my mom and dad, brother, sisters, and friends for all of your support. Chi miigwech. Tabitha, there was absolutely no shortage of people wanting to sing your praises. You're a truly remarkable leader, inspiring to so many of us. And, and your career is just beginning. It's going to be remarkable to, uh, to watch, and I will do so with pleasure and close attention. I want to thank again our incredible partners for making this possible, our episode partner, Layuna, and our contributing partner, Hydro One, our supporting partners at Bell and CIBC, and of course, our series partner, Canadian National Railways. And finally, thanks to you, our viewers, for joining in on this. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and continue the conversation. Till next time, think inclusive. Mm -hmm.